Hello and welcome back to Math Tea UK. Um, we are carp fishing this weekend. We are in the northwest and we're at a lake I've never been before. It is very wild. I think the area that I've chosen, the swim that I've chosen, is actually a toilet. Uh, not quite sure, but um, looks a bit like it. Uh, and over my shoulder, you will see my hammock. Not brought a bivy, but hammock. Lots of trees. Best way to go fishing is how I fish in France with a hammock. I do not use a bivy in France. And uh, that is my preferred way anywhere really in the UK, anywhere I can get a hammock up instead of a bivy, I'd rather be in my hammock. It's far more comfortable, far more room, more admin space. If it pours down all night, makes no difference to me whatsoever. I'm not cooped up in a little tiny little pen. Okay, so welcome. Let's have a look. Let's see how we get on and uh, catch you in a bit. So what do we have? I have a little beach. Some of you may recognize the lake already. Got a friend over there called Bobby fishing in the distance. Uh, my pod's here. I'm going to move it down later. Or I may even keep it there. I don't know. I don't know yet. I'll wait and see. Doesn't appear to be any wind. Let's have a look further in. This is going to be part essential tonight because of the big tarp. Don't need anything else. There we go, fellas. You can see why I like tarping it now, as opposed to the bivy. Far much more room, much, much more room, should I say. Um, really comfortable hammock. I'll, I'll show you a little bit about that later. I know this is a fishing video, but you know, you've got to learn sometimes, fellas, and just sticking to a bivy isn't always the best way. Sometimes you can be far, far more comfortable stepping out for what you believe is supposed to be correct. What is correct and what is wrong? You tell me. Bait boat down there, ready to go. Well, here's camp. A little bit different, a little bit unusual, not what you're used to seeing. I've got a little bit of light left, so I'm now going to spend time getting my gear sorted, ready for fishing. Hello! Right, all set up now. We are three anglers on a 12 acre lake. <clears throat> Um, plenty of room between us My mates nipped off to do a bit of socializing with uh, Bobby over the road there um, the, the, the trouble is that the, the swims are so far apart that no matter where you go you, you, You're off your rods too far, so we can't do that can we so someone has to stay behind and look after the rods And this time it's me, so I, I don't mind that because I've got the fire going down there um, We're allowed to have a fire going so uh, again, it's great um, I know some of you guys don't like that, and you know we're supposed to be shh, hush, hush, but my baits are over 100 meters away. You know, they're not going to hear the crackling of that fire, they're not going to hear that radio, and, uh, and they're not flashing me torch and everything all over the lake, so. I've got my rods quite high, actually. Normally, I would put them down in the water, a little low, on, on perhaps like the shore or just, just away from the water, but. There's quite a considerable step from the current water level up to where it should be. So I just think it's best to have them further back up at the way. I don't know. I don't know how this lake works. I, I don't know whether all of a sudden it will fill very quickly and drone my rods. I, I don't know. So I'm not going to take the risk. So they're quite high out of the ground. The fish finder was uh, showing fish mid-water. And I should have put zigs on, but I didn't um, because I was being lazy. And I may pay the price tonight because of that. Now Bobby, over the other side of the lake, when he was here on, on his swim, and there is the only swim within 100 meters either side, uh, they, they, were, they were rolling right in front of him today, which is unusual this time of year, but they were. I, I seen them myself, I said, Bobby, they're, just, they're under your rod tips, which is amazing for this time of the year to see them up so high. But there they were, I did see them. So let's... Uh, what Bobby does alright here. I keep hearing these alarms going, but so um, it could be just Bobby missing. But I would personally have them under under my rod tips. But nothing. Fish finder didn't see anything here except further out mid water. So there you go. Okay. I think I'll have another um, beer. What have you got there? That's what I've done with him. Wash meals. 
Do you I, like Bushmills? <coughs> I cannot believe you've been holding out on me. I haven't a hot not look, right. With I got mills. that given last week because I did a job for someone. Don't. And just, I thought it was shit. Just go over there with your mate, Bob. <laughs> I'll buy you a full bottle if that's what it takes. Do you like Bushmills? No, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah, thank God you said that. I, I took a swig of it and thought what you just thought. I thought, I thought it was a really premium whiskey then. No, actually, it's not too bad, actually. I do like Bush Mills. I don't like it. Do you like the fire, though? I love the fire, map. <laughs> I mean, it is... It gives warmth. Yeah, that, this... Beautiful. It's a different kettle of fish, isn't it? I mean, you, you are going to be so, so comfortable. This is combining the best of both worlds. I think I found a lake that actually does and it's not far from home, is it? Well, I was saying to the camera earlier that normally, well, we've been to France twice. Yeah. We've we've done um, uh, Etang Rendezvous. Yeah. And the first time I was in a bivy, the second time I started hammocking, and I took my hammock with me, and I, yeah. and, and, it, and it was just like a, a totally different concept. Well, we, we, uh, the other thing was that I remember from that holiday was your. Uh, your cocktail night yeah, and all okay. the trouble you went to and I thought <laughs> that is just mad I mean at, at the time I, I knew you but I didn't know you but now I know you and I should have given you more kudos for that that was fantastic that the effort you put into that so how many times does wood warm you up Dave? Oh, God, Dave? Yeah? how many times does wood warm you up? twice three Cutting, moving, and burning. Oh, ghost. Actually, I'm surprised how good the wood is, actually. Yeah, look, it's, just, it's, it's really dry, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Boat <laughs> well, rain's come on again. Right. I don't know how he got round there. But Ravy Dave has snagged up. He's had to go for a walk in his waders. That's his little house. Anybody that knows the area now will sure as well know where we are. Still not going to tell you. Snurgling there to where I am. Oh. Ooh, here we go. Yeah, it is a little bit messy, but you see, it's also extremely comfortable too. It's all the rain we've had this morning, we just sit under there and doing our admin here. Here he is. How'd you get on? Did you save it or lose it? Lost it. I tried a different angle walk, got round. It was nice around there, look, but my god, there's some vlogs in that lake. Is there? Yeah, there's like telegraph poles and stuff everywhere. Right. <sighs> like the new clobber. I like him, yeah, yeah. Barks. No you, barks. You, you look like um, a fisherman. Right, well, I think it's time to do. Oh, I've got to put a new rig on now. Well, you've got to, but you might as well put your zig on now, haven't you? What Dave and I have decided is that we're going to do some ziggy 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 yeah. 
Better not get too close, I'd, uh, otherwise I'll be... <laughs> you shrink wrapped. Yeah. You'd be shrink wrapped in your own waders. <laughs> shrink tubed. Shrink tubed. <laughs> Tell you what, if I didn't have that, I still would have lost my rig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got a shitty ass, I know that. Oh, I sat down on the floor. Oh yeah, you've got a shitty ass. Oh, arse and vega. You love no money. Well, it's been raining most of the day and we're still in our little admin shelter and it is absolutely fantastic still! So what have we got going on? Just rebated. So there she was, sandwiched between two big bucks. <laughs> Hello <laughs> and welcome. Today we're going to talk about some idioms and some red herrings. Why? I hear you ask. Why? Well, on one of my last videos I made a comment and I got some really strange, in my opinion, responses from it. And the comment was, there's two noddies over there. Where I'm from, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean, it, it's a style of fishing, it's a, a discipline of fishing. It's, it's, it, I would associate a noddy with a... Match angler. There you go. I ain't even said anything, match angler. and I. Not a carp fisherman, not a fly fisherman, not a sea fisherman. Um, nodding is a term that I would use to describe a match angler, coarse fisherman. Now, there was a guy that was quite offended by that, me saying that, you know, two noddies over there. Weren't you, Alan? And we started a little bit of a debate and I was quite happy to discuss it with him until he got a little bit silly and I had to had to block him really because just getting a little bit too silly in some of the comments he were making he was calling me a murderer for um, for deer hunting I'm a deer hunter and I'm also a fox hunter and I'm also uh, into vermin control so I do all that as well and he, obviously he wasn't the sort of guy that likes all that sort of stuff so there you go um, but fishing's okay uh, I read a couple of books because what I don't do is I don't go onto Google and type in the word noddy to see what comes up because if you do you get a little guy with a hat on and you also get Urban Dictionary which isn't isn't a true representation of the word however Alan was sort of right in the end because noddy is actually derogatory to anybody it's not a fishing term at all it is the word is actually based on um, let's say the fool the idiot the village idiot and <laughs> uh, like that one um, so it is actually derogatory to call somebody a noddy in the true meaning of the word so anyway I don't apologize because as far as I was concerned it is what it is, but I won't use the term again, I don't think, because I don't think it's fair, and, and if it is meant as, a, as an insult, then uh, the person probably using it is more likely to be the idiot than the guy he's telling it to, because I respect all forms of fishing, whether whatever type you do, whatever discipline you're into, doesn't bother me, one's no better than the other. In fact, I do all sorts myself. Dave goes uh, beach casting, pier fishing off uh, Blackpool, um, river fishing, <laughs> bit of noddying, <laughs> um, you know, so, nah, no, uh, I won't use the word again, but there, uh, yeah. so Alan, you were right to a degree, uh, and I'm man enough to accept it, uh, but uh, there you are, end of story, okay? Is there anything else you'd like to know? English idioms. Do you know the meaning of? Let's pick one. Matt. 
What's that friggin' Noddy doing over there? He's driving a little car with bells on it. Him with the red hat? Yes. <laughs> Is it wrong to say that he's got big ears? Yeah, well, he, he may have big ears. That's, that's, the, that his mate? that's a fact, I'm afraid. Better talk a bit quieter then. Ear. Long ears. Here we go. Ear. Long ear. An inquisitive person who is always asking questions. Long ears. To shoot one's bolt. To shoot your bolt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning <laughs> to spend one's resources prematurely in a contest. Say that again. To spend one's resources prematurely in a contest. Right. Okay. Been there a few times. Hello, Charlotte Carter. How's university? Hope you're doing well, mate. Hope you're behaving yourself and not having too much fun. And hello to your friends too. The one on your shoulder that's watching this with you. Hunting term, one for me. To beat around the bush is to approach a subject indirectly without tackling the centre point directly. The saying is 300 years old. Hunting phrase relates to beaters who use sticks, bushy in the bushes and undergrowth, wherever game has taken refuge, with the intention of scaring it out into the line of the hunter's guns. That is known as catching the quarry by beating around the bush. I've messed around a few bushes in my time. Mm, some of them aren't even bushes. I've never even beaten them. Never beaten them. You'll never beat a bush. <laughs> Be <Beacon> brother. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. To throw one off. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that off camera? <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, um, we're not doing very well fishing, by the way. None of us has had a run yet. Keep forgetting we're a fishing team. What? Thank you. <laughs> What's groin oil? <laughs> Fun lock. Fun lock. Clam lock. A device used to fix females to <laughs> <by> bicycle <laughs> feet. <laughs> Yeah. It's got to stop raining, but something that takes a while before it, it settles. You just have to leave it, man, for a while just for it to go. Yeah. You know, steady. Showing loads of fish there. Is that, is that right? That? Well, I don't know. Time for I got to 13 foot before. I think I'll take it back to the man. I don't think I even need it now.
a very static video this, but it is boring then. Uh, when's this, when's this sort? What's that sort, Mr. If it stops, I might just change my zig, bring that in and come right into the margins, bring it in really shallow. Because we're right out in the lake at the moment, I'm 80 metres, 40 metres, and uh, my zig is right out, I would say, at least 100 metres with a zig. You can't cast them out here. I put them out by a boat. So just everything got out by the boat. You just can't cast into a swim. That's why we've got the boat. You know? Dave did a recce of it last week. So we came and he said, look, there's some really good swims on the far side. The fish showing, which was good. So we, well, that's why we decided to come over here. And uh, But we, there were certain things that we needed to consider. And that was, well, you can't cast in this swim. No. <coughs> I'm just uh, I'm just gonna pop it in a little bit shallower water. What you having, mister? I'm just going to toast it. I've got my tin curry for tonight. Well, we certainly don't need to worry about leaving rubbish behind. We've cleared up most of it. Yeah. a lot of noise. Dave? Yeah? I think we need another log on the fire. Uh, I think it's ample. But if you do feel a little bit frosty or cold, we'll, uh, we'll put some big stuff on it. Yeah, we'll just have a... the back of here, there's a big full of milk of this in it. No, no. It's alright this fishing, isn't it? Oh, a little bit, mate. Especially when you're not catching them. Yeah. See all that's out there. It's starting to get dark now. It's starting to be on map. 
It is ten past five. Ten past five. And mock. The sleeping system that I'm using is a UK Hammocks underquilt, a UK Hammocks top quilt, a 10th Wonder hammock, and uh, whoopee slings which um, suspend the hammock, and everything else hangs off that. Apart from the whoopee slings, everything's made in the UK. Uh, but that gear there is, I always use it for my um, hunting and shooting weekends, and, it's, and that's what it's, it, it's top of the range stuff. It's very, very good quality gear, and it will keep me warm down to about minus 15, perhaps a little bit more because I've got an extra fill put in it. But pure down, very, very expensive. I wouldn't want to buy it again, I certainly wouldn't want to lose it or damage it. But that's that's what it is, and, and the tarp. And that's why I have all this gear because I'm I'm out and about pretty much most every weekends anyhow. No, if I'm not fishing, I'm hammocking or shooting or something. Else. But that fire is gorgeous. Now, what you don't know when we first got here, I'm going to show you some pictures actually. Um, when we first turned up, well, I took some pictures of of the mess that was left lying around, and it was disgraceful from other fishermen that have been here and, and just left gear. I mean, there's still a bag full of gear over there. And it's just disgusting that people do that. There's totally no need for it either. Um, and we've got that fire, and we've burnt most of it. It's gone, it's just burnt. So, but I'll show you them. They look, uh, this is what it looked like. God, that's a, that is kicking off heat, yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to be a little bit too close in a minute. Oh, well that's not, just let it burn down. Were well, your big logs burning? One of the arms, one of the arms are on fire here. I mean, they must be ten pounders, and they're just they're just pulling them out. Well, we've got a visitor. Yeah. Right. You know. Which is not even a knock. They're coming out on already. Just having a one good hard. Twenty-six. Right. And as I was taking it back to the water, it slipped. And I made a little, little tiny, little tiny hole in its gill. Total accident. Total accident. It was caught three weeks after, and the lad said it went 30. Now right. I knew it went 26 because I see the cut on its gill that I accidentally made, but I didn't blow him up. So, and then another one was well, caught. That could be a wasteland that someone's not took the weight off. Can't well, it? The guy knew what he was doing. You know what I mean? And right. I was a bit shocked that he's called it at 30 when I called it three weeks ago. The trouble is, yeah, when you know, when you know, you know, don't you? I have no reason to lie, I mean, so I left it at that and then another guy called it. Can you imagine being cooped up in a bivvy? Rain, rain, rain. I don't know, just sleep. Yeah. It was like when it was. Listen, Ten to know. seven, Saturday night, nobody has had a run or a beep. We had a chat with a guy earlier who's fished this uh, lake a few times. So it's not a very good lake in the winter anyway. Uh, the water's always cold because of the the water that comes off the hills, much higher area, so whatever. Um, so we're not really confident that we're going to pull anything out of the water, even though we have changed all our baits and tactics. So we're just going to keep them out there anyhow. Look, just give it a go. So Dave, that's what we're here for. Yeah. 
I want you to talk me through your tactics, of what you've done, how you fished this weekend, and what have you done to break in a new lake? Well, not my tactics haven't worked, have they? No one's caught anything. It's difficult, like low stock. We just covered as many areas with a little bit of bait. It's only February. Different depths, different ranges. Tried zigs in the day. Without moving and trying different, a different area, there's not a lot you can just work the area as hard as you can. We might be in the right place, fish might not be feeding. Who knows? I don't know if I could have done anything different. Knowing what you know now though, would you do anything different? Would, what would you, knowing the lake that you've been on, the, the baits that you've used, I mean, what, what else would you would, would bring to try? But what else if would you... If it was coming back? Yeah. Uh, I think I would just try different areas anyway, just to get a feel for the lake. Even if, I mean, we've only spoke to one angler that said that this is a, a better end, but we've nothing to go off, have we? No. And until you actually start looking them or seeing them, there's not a lot you can. You can't go off nothing when you're getting no feedback. I've not been getting any liners, which is the first thing I look for. I'm not that leaded. If you're getting liners, then you know there's you know there's fish. Fish between, between you and there. Yeah, yeah, but there's been absolutely nothing, so they're rather very sluggish. Well, not in the area. It's quite a deep lake, really, in places, isn't it? Yeah, twelve. What did you say? Thirteen feet. I think the, the, the deepest goes. It's not far off eighteen foot. Eighteen. Well, I've only seen out there up to hundred meters. I've only seen what eleven. Yeah, 12? 11, yeah. And as you go further down the lake, towards the shallows, that'll be... That goes for nearly all of them. If, if it's safe to wade, get out. Hello. Hello. It would appear I've had a ping-ping from my phone phone. And it will be... Ash Hampton. <laughs> Ash always comments. Hello, Ash. I'll, I'll make sure you definitely, Ash. I've just got your text, mate. I'll make sure you you you, you end up in the uh, final cut of the video because you've just responded to us. Let me read your comments. There we go. Oh, there! Quick prelude. Shut up! Shut up, me. Please. You boys must be mental. Good luck. Ash, we are mental. I bet you wish was with us. Oh, and uh, Ash is, a, is the pike fisherman I told you about. Good lad. Nice one, Ash. One thumbs up as well. That must be from you. Cheers, mate. Yeah, here we go. Um, We've just had a, a message from a guy called Mike Blake. Hello, Mike. Um, the uh, yes, Mike, we are bored. Yes, we definitely are. Uh, we're not catching fish, so we're definitely bored. But um, thanks for your comment. Um, appreciate that, mate. Um, hopefully, we'll have something to show you in the morning. Who knows? Nice one, Mike. See you later. Okay, this is turning out to be a bit of fun, actually. Um, We've just had a m message from uh, one of Dave's old friends, a guy called Gary Cross. Oh, Gary, yeah, I know Gary. And, and Gary has said to Dave, <laughs> uh, Gary, I don't know who's going to answer this, tell Dave he could have asked me to go with you. Yes, do you know what, Gary? He could have done. Dave. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I could have done. Sorry, Gary. Uh, I've obviously made you Gary Cross. I've made you... <laughs> 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 Gary, I'd, I'd love all my friends to come fishing. He doesn't know how to answer that, Gary. Oh, so, um, mate, Gary Cross, Cross. I, I think what what Dave is trying to say is, um, well, maybe next time when we go, I'll have to drop you drop you an invite. Uh, in, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll this give is you my a second trip this year, Gary. By the way. Yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll give you an invite next time, Gary. Okay. <laughs> Great question, and uh, welcome to YouTube. <laughs> well, I lost one last night, Matt. Did you? Yeah. He fucking just fell asleep about 11 o'clock. <laughs> it was pathetic. <coughs> <coughs> I better than either. But he went. 
couldn't hold him any longer. <sighs> Blankety blank. Yeah, about 11 o'clock uh, the wind changed, it turned into a snow, snow westerly. Like snow westerly? Yeah, that one. I was, wasn't going to put that big log on, you know. You know, because it was getting late, I thought, oh, I'm going to put it on. It'll, it'll go. Was there any much wood? No. Everything's gone. Look. No fire. Gone. Where's the fire gone? We do come again, that branch is going. Gone. You know, this one that's just shot out at an angle. They say they're the best two swings. I suppose if you come here, would you get on these two again, Matt? Do you no. Or no. would you try somewhere else anyway? Just Definitely somewhere else. I think if it is a challenge you want, it makes you want to do it a bit harder as well, do you not think? You know, like if we come and caught three each, you think, oh, it's pretty easy here. Mm. It sort of gets in my head a bit when I've had a blank, you think. You start thinking, what have I done wrong? Could you have changed anything? And there's not a lot we could have done, I don't think. I think even them guys that have fished it a lot, unless you actually know the spots that they're feeding on. Well the ledge is definitely the one, isn't it, here, this point. Yeah, well any drop off is a feature, isn't it, or change of And they'll, they'll run along it, won't they? Yeah. yeah in it's the summer. But they're not. Lake, isn't it, really? Yeah, but they're not running along it now. And there we go, finished. No sign of the fire. That's the pod. Put the, put the fire back in the van. So, there we are, so you can have the fun, have a mess around, have a laugh, clean up as well, no sign we've even been, just as it should be. Are they your tampons? <sighs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Final word, Dave, for the weekend? Uh, see you folks, it's been uh, unmemorable. <laughs>